to Monkeys Drinking Beans. Today we're going to talk about the zombies, which I am technically undead, but technically not a zombie. Although you will hear Scott think he, I am a zombie. <laughs> okay, good buddy. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist that, Dom. Hi, I'm That's Scott Pyburn. <laughs> and I'm Dom DeBellis. Welcome to Monkeys Drinking Beans. That was Frank, my uh, my intro meister of the show. Um, I thought he was your butler. He is my butler. He's my candy butler. Okay, I actually have this little candy bowl, and I, I kind of put it in his hands, and he holds my candy. Nice. Anytime I want a piece of candy. Frank, candy. Oh, candy. Nice. <laughs> I need a candy, but candy butler. Note yes. to self. So today's show is all about um, undead, or people who have played undead. Or people who have directed Undead. So we're well, we're, about, we're doing a tribute, really. Yeah, we're doing a tribute to George Romero and Martin Landau. And uh, I'm going to start today's show off lost with, this week. with yeah, 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 a big loss, a big loss. Um, we're going to start with George Romero, and uh, let's get right into it. Um, I mm. was never, back in the day, a horror fan or a zombie fan until I met one of my close friends in high school, uh, Brian Summers. And he was a huge horror fan, still is to this day. And he introduced me one day. We we're over at his house after school, hanging out. And he's like, Scott, you want to watch this movie? I'm like, what's it called? And it's called Dawn of the Dead. I was like, okay, sure, I'll check it out. Um, Dawn of the Dead, 1978, one of my favorite zombie films of all time. Um, takes place in a shopping mall. And it's like military, kids in a shopping mall. It was, I. here's the thing, he tried introducing me to night of the living dead in black and white 1960s couldn't get into it but this was in the 80s it was like okay commando arnold schwarzenegger 80s film 80s soundtrack 80s hairstyle all about the time it was in and from that point on i got kind of got infected with the zombie virus you know i've been a zombie <laughs> fan. i've been a zombie fan ever since um george romero passed away i mean he, he, i mean go on i mean db look up his credits for me um he was he you know he was involved in creep show great series of uh, short series of films he was involved with um tales from the dark side dom do you remember tales from the dark side oh, yeah that was my first uh, exposure to mr romero's yeah. work yeah until then i'd never creep show and tales from the dark side are my first exposure to him Totally. Yeah. Uh, Tales from the Dark Side. If you don't know Tales from the Dark Side, if you're too young to remember Tales from the Dark Side, uh, go on YouTube and Google it, and or Google it and find out. Great Twilight Zone esque kind of show. Totally. Uh, set in the '80s, has the creepiest intro, opening credits sequence. That that <laughs> that negative flip and that chilling music. Oh, just creeps me out. Just thinking. Totally. About it. Yeah. <laughs> um, Scared the hell out of me. Yeah, uh, great show. Like great show. Thirteen or something. Um, and you, you gotta, I gotta pay props to George Romero, even though you know, whether you're a fan of him or you're not a fan of him, uh, we don't have The Walking Dead, one of my all-time favorite shows and comic books, without George Romero. Um, he's he is the king of the zombie genre, you know, in creating it, and um, it is what it is, you know. For me, he created a comic book called Empire of the Dead. Uh, recently mm. for Marvel Comics, a 15-issue series. And I know a lot of people, you know, maybe yourself included, he's kind of a one-hit wonder. You know, he, I mean, he he's done zombies. Zombies, zombies, zombies. And maybe part of that is like falling into um, the Happy Days, the Fonzie trap. You know, Henry Winkler, great, great actor, but you're stereotyped. You've done something, and then this is kind of all you can do, and either like Adam West or... Henry Winkler, you embrace it or you rebel against it. George Romero embraced it. Whether that was what he wanted to do entirely with his life or not, I don't know. But um, he embraced it and ran with it and made a great career out of it. And uh, a side note for my daughter who might be watching this, uh, he voiced an episode of Phineas and Ferb. They did a... Uh, uh, no way! Uh, yeah, way. He did a, they did an episode called Night of the Living Pharmacists where the, his character's name is Donna Dead. So yeah, um, In fact. <laughs> yeah, 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 crazy, right? So Scott, I have a question for you. Did you, 
so I read somewhere uh, because you know obviously he just passed away uh, so a lot of people are writing articles now uh, somebody leaked out that uh, he's got four screenplays that he's left behind mm -hmm. and uh, his longtime contributor and I don't remember what his name is I think I might have taken a note on that mm -hmm. um, has vowed that he's going to complete the films and actually release them yeah I, I don't remember the name of his contributor either but I remember um, when I was perusing IMDB the other day that uh, he has a production called Road of the Dead which Matt is Berman. Yes. Matt Berman is yep. his longtime contributor. And uh, he's these four screenplays he intends to make into films, but only one of them is a zombie movie. Hmm. Interesting. The other three are not zombie films. Okay. So maybe he's not a one-hit wonder after all. Well, I hope not, honestly. And I'm not saying he is. I mean, I'm not... Yeah, that's my term, not yours. Sure, sure, sure. I, no, no, I, I understand. Excuse but me, I'm not, I'm not a... I'm not as big a fan as you are i respect that he did yeah. what he did yeah. but it and just well, seems like a one note guy to me well and i understand that and i can i can honestly say i have not seen everything he's ever done um brian if you're watching this um you know post some notes in the in the bottom because yeah. my friend brian could tell you more about george romero than i could he's a huge fan yeah, but, i mean no disrespect yeah I'm just absolutely but it's it, you know. i mean he did touch my life in this in the sense of i will always remember being you know being introduced to George Romero and Dawn of the Dead through my friend and mm. that was the 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 bite so to speak where I got infected with the zombie bug and now I'm a huge zombie fan I, I'm a huge yeah. Walking Dead fan uh you know I've seen different zombie genres and zombie movies like 28 Days Later uh, sure World War Z um mm. Z Nation on Sci-Fi Channel yeah. and and yeah, I'm a little biased. I'm I'm a little more like okay, The Walking Dead is the new George Romero. He they're kind of defining the zombie genre after George, in my opinion, because I compare everything to The Walking Dead because I'm such a huge fan. Um, other people, other fans out there might say, well, no, Scott, this is better. To each their own, you know, potato potato. Can I ask you? Uh, so is the movie? It's probably not a Romero film, hmm. but is it an imitation of a Romero film? Probably is the uh, The Last Man on Earth starring Vincent Price. Oh, good question. Well, there's... You know okay. the film? Yeah, yeah. I know the film, and there's all... Um, I'll be honest with you, it's been so long since I've seen that movie. Uh, it's a great film. Let me uh, let me Google that yeah, for you. Yeah, Google that and find out when it came out. The other... the other. I mean, there's a ton of zombie-esque films that came it's out It's definitely around a zombie time. film. Well, there's another uh, movie uh, that um, Charlton Heston did called The Omega Man. Which is another right. zo zombie-esque yeah. kind of end-of-the-world scenario film. So, I don't know who spawned who, or, you know. Oh, gosh. Last Man on Earth is that TV show that was awful. <laughs> Hang on. Last Man Alive, maybe? Hold, please, while we do research that we haven't done before we started the show. No, it's just it occurs to me that... I know, uh, I know. <laughs> I, I didn't even think about it, and, and I've seen it, like, maybe 30 years ago. Yeah. And it's an old black and white, uh, gosh, you know, I, okay, I'm just going to look up Vincent Price and look him up on well, AM, you know, IMDb. Isn't it great that we can look up things on IMDb now? Yeah, we don't have to go to the card catalog. Hold, please, while we go to the library, do some research and come back. Have breakfast and lunch. <laughs> and there he is. Vincent Price looking dapper. Michael Jackson's Thriller video. No, not that one. No. No. Although he did give a boss. Well, rape Night of that. the Living Dead, George Romero's first film was in 1968. So if it was pre-1968, it was not inspired by George Romero, obviously. If the Vincent Price film you were speaking of was after 1968, who knows? 1964, The Last Man on Earth. Yes, so maybe George was inspired by Vincent. Who knows? Directed by Ubaldo Radona. Yes. And Sidney Salco. Yes. Okay, but I that... I have two directors on a film, I have no idea. Yes, but Dom, you are squirreling now, because we're not talking about Vincent Price, we're talking about George Romero. <laughs> I'm sorry. So I have no idea, but I'm sure it was inspired by Romero, right? No, Romero was inspired by Vincent, because that was before. 1964 is before 1968. You're right, I'm an idiot. That's okay. I'm going to go back to my room now. <laughs> 
We all have our moments. Watch a previous episode where you'll see Scott being an idiot and Dom being the genius. It's you flipped today. <laughs> no. It's a very rare thing when we're both on. You yes. know what I'm saying? Uh, this is why we are monkeys fun. drinking beans. That's right. One brain between the two of us. Mm-hmm. It's a timeshare brain. Yeah. But essentially, you know, I just wanted to say that I wouldn't be a zombie fan if it weren't for George Romero and my friend Brian for introducing me to George Romero. And um, I'd be interesting to see where the zombie genre goes from here. And that's really all I have on George Romero. If, unless there's anything else you want to add, Dom, we can uh, segue into our next segment on the great Martin Landau. Yeah, I, boy, talking about you talk about the undead. Uh, Martin Landau, as you yes. know, received an Academy Award for playing uh, the great Bella Lugosi. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Played uh, the greatest undead character, arguably, uh, in, in, in all cinematogra- cinematography history. But um, Yes. As, as Dracula, of course. In Ed Wood, directed by Tim Burton. In the movie Ed Wood, which was directed by none other than... Uh, than uh, Oh gosh, you just said it. I just Tim, Bur- Tim Burton. Tim Burton, of course. Um, so when Tim Burton uh, directed uh, Ed Wood, he went and looked for uh, an actor, and he found he found, uh, of course, um, Martin Landau, who was very old at the time, but uh, came out and uh, and did an awesome job and, and uh, won the Academy Award for that that role. And I gotta um, say, Dom, that movie is is. Okay, I know I'm going to get a lot of flack for this in the comments because I know there's huge Tim Burton fans out there who worship yeah. the ground he walks on. But in my opinion, <laughs> it's Tim Burton's version of Howard the Duck. Um, it's well, true. It's true to the character of Ed Wood, but Ed Wood's story, how is, in my opinion, not that interesting. I mean, I love the portrayals. I love Johnny Depp playing Ed Wood. I love mm-hmm. Martin Landau. I love the guy they got to play Tibor. I mean, I mean, it was perfect casting perfect documentary yeah. drama of a story that basically if it weren't for martin landau i wouldn't watch <laughs> well and you know it's not everyone's cup of tea no it's not it's not no. my, I, I love it for martin landau's portrayal of bella lugosi and i watch and I, it and i think that that's why so many fans yes. love it and i watch it more i've watched it more than once the mm-hmm. fact that i'm not a big fan of the movie that it's not my favorite movie it's lower on the list than my favorite movie but I've watched it more than once because of Martin Landau. Yeah. I think, you know, to, for me, what's special about it is that, um, you know, I, how many times have you watched Dracula with Bela Lugosi? Yeah, yeah. dozens. But yeah. how often do you get an opportunity to look at at the actor who played that character? How, how often do you get a yeah. behind-the-scenes look at these actors? Because they're long gone to history. Sure, you know? sure, sure. And to get a glimpse of someone giving a portrayal of that of yeah. that actor yeah. uh, as a character in this in yeah. this um, in this story, yeah, uh, it's not the same, but it's a, the very similitude that that is turned in by an actor of of Landau's caliber. Yes, it, if I can say that. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's it's so powerful that. Um, it gives you it gives you that the tingling of like oh my god I'm I'm, I'm seeing Bella yeah. Lugosi yeah and, and, <laughs> yeah and for the fact that that okay if it weren't for Tim Burton making a movie like Ed Wood about a director who basically is not a famous he's famous for being right. horrible um, yeah. there there might not be some of these documentaries we have today on on these different actors or docudramas um, sure I you know when I think of Martin Landau think, playing Bela Lugosi, I think of, okay, what other actors could play? I want to see Boris Karloff's story. You know? Yeah. I want to see the Abbott and Costello story. And what actors, I start, my mind starts casting these these roles, you know, like Nathan Lane as, as Lou Costello. Well, well, didn't we just see the, the Three Stooges yes, uh, yes. biofilm? Well, there was two. There was the biofilm that Mel Gibson made, which was great, which was a docudrama, te- television docudrama. I think it was made in 2000. Don't quote me on that because I'm not going to IMDb it right now and derail the show. It's um, okay. <laughs> like Dom just did. Yeah, like Dom just did. I wasn't going to say that. I was going to be nice and let that slide under the radar. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the, and then there was the 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 Three Stooges movie, which was like recasting the Three Stooges, which had its own merits. Um, 
putting them in modern Tom times. Hanks. Right. Well, yeah. yeah, but I like the the whole docu docu drama documentary idea. And Martin Landau was brilliant as as that. And that wasn't his only film, obviously. I mean, he's got a laundry list of credits: Space 1999, Mission Impossible, North sure. by Northwest. Um, yeah, guys, IMDb this guy because you will be impressed. Yes. Uh, I'm not going to give you a litany of his films. I could, uh, but I'll tell you, he is he is very impressive. But the the reason that I really admire Martin Landau, I'll give you a my my take on it is first of all his longevity this man's career mm-hmm. spans mm-hmm. seven decades yeah yeah and uh anytime you can be a working actor and i mean a working actor he never stopped working no for seven decades yeah. my hat's off to you yeah uh but you know this guy this guy worked everything from on the movie cleopatra mm-hmm. back in the day that incredibly costly production yeah. <laughs> that uh, I mean, I don't think anybody spent more money than Cleopatra production budget yeah. ever since then. Well, and, I mean, this uh, is, again, in an era before digital, it's like everything's built. Oh, oh are you kidding? Before there, digital? That was before... Uh, before analog, no. You know, that was like, that was crazy <laughs> money yeah. back then. Yeah. All the way up to, uh, you know, Ed Wood and the Majestic, uh, you know... Oh, Majestic, great film. Great oh, film. Oh, gosh, yeah. I mean, yeah. terrific. Uh, things that you may not know about Martin Landau is... Uh, uh, and this is something that you didn't know, actually. Uh, I found out today, just this morning. Um, he turned down a TV role back in the 1960s uh, on a little tiny TV show you might have heard of uh, called Star Trek. He oh, turned down the role of Mr. Spock, if you can believe that. That's right. That's right. Um, no. Yeah. And uh, but but the great thing, the greatest thing about uh, Martin Landau, in my opinion, is that he gave back. He uh, he was a student in the actor's studio uh, mm-hmm. back in the day mm-hmm. when, uh, and I don't know if any of our viewers uh, know about the actor's studio. It's the school that was started by Lee Strasberg and Elia Kazan and mm-hmm. uh, those guys, Harold Klerman. Yep. Uh, it's the school that uh, produced all of the great method actors. Uh, yeah. Um, Back in the day, uh, yeah. Well, it was back in the day of the studio system, where you know the studios sure. had a hand in grooming and educating and training actors to be able to do something. And I go as far as to saying Martin Landau was kind of one of the last generation to be involved in the studio system before studios stopped doing that. Well, and 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 to be honest, uh, studios haven't stopped sending students there. Right, uh, right, but it's not like the back in the day with Judy Garland where it was like, look, you're going to train six hours a day. You're under contract. We own you. We're responsible for well, that's, training that's you, true. teaching you to dance, teaching you to sing, teaching you to do yeah. accents, et cetera, et they cetera. Force them. And it's they all paid by them. the studio. It's yeah, not saying yeah. that they, they don't send people to the actor's studio, but it's not like, hey, we're sponsoring you because you're the next Tom right. Cruise. No. That's certainly <laughs> true. But um, but in return, you know, and, and what I mean by giving back is that Landau – uh, eventually became executive director of the actor studio in Los Angeles, uh, where he was based, and uh, and the actor studio has you know studios all over mm-hmm. the country. Um, but uh, he he, for example, coached um, Jack Nicholson, mm. Angelica Houston, mm-hmm. uh, you know, colleagues of that caliber. Yeah. So yeah. you know, when you watch these people's you know, careers, you know, he had a hand in those careers. Yeah, yeah. He, he and, helped them become yeah. the actors they, they became. And he helped were, own yeah. their craft yeah. in a very real sense. And so, um, you know, I think that's that says a lot about him. You know, he didn't have to do all of that. Right, To give right, it back. Right. And, right. Uh, yeah, we've lost a giant, you know, in, in the craft. Of, of, yeah, uh, yeah. Not right. only live theater... But in uh, in yeah. film and television, yeah. his legacy will be felt. You know. Well, and I honestly, I have a little bit of a connection with Martin Landau. You do. You know the seven degrees of separation deal. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um. So uh, a few years back at Wizard World, um, 2012, I believe, I hosted a, a Buffy the Vampire Slayer panel. I moderated yeah. a panel with his daughter, uh, yeah. Juliet Landau who played Drusilla on Buffy the Vampire Slayer, along with James oh. Marsters and um, Camden Toy and uh, the, basically the entire entire secondary cast of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And we'll post a picture 
you know, on our website and on our Facebook page, you know, for those of you who are interested. But um, cool. it was it was interesting because I did all the I wrote all these intros for all these actors to give them a big introduction and send off on stage. So when they came out, you know, the crowd went crazy. And I talked to her because I did I did my research. I was you know, I was like, OK, I got 24 hours oh, sure. to research all these actors so I don't look like a total idiot and find out what they've done outside of Buffy because, you know, it's not about Buffy, just about Buffy. So I talked to Juliet and I asked her, I was like, I know you're Martin Lando's daughter. Um, do you want me to mention that? Or is that not something you want me to mention? And she's like, no, I would prefer if you didn't, you know, I'm, I'm my own actress. You know, I, I like to stand on my own. And I respected that. And I'm like, okay, I just, I didn't want to introduce you that way. And then you'd be like, okay, he's my father, big deal, you know, because you're your own person. So in a sense, I mean, you know, I've got that connection. I think that's it's not, sensitive. Sure. Yeah, it's not much of a connection to, to Martin Landau, but it is, you know, mm. six degrees of separation. Give her a choice. Yeah. And that was a great experience. But, yeah, I, I was I was a big fan of Ed Wood back in the day and, and some of Martin Landau's work. So when I got the opportunity, I was like, wait a minute, Landau. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Seriously? Yeah. Cool. And you know, it was that was part of the reason I was like I was a fan of Martin Landau, but I didn't want to put her in that shadow if she didn't want to be in that shadow. Well, sometimes we're fanboys, you know. Even uh, even despite our best intentions, <laughs> we become you know revert to that. Oh my gosh, you're you're that person. Oh my oh, god. Oh yeah, and you had no idea how much <laughs> how much of a fanboy I was that day. That was just like oh my god, I get to introduce all these people and they shake my hands and hug me and take a picture with me. <laughs> Right. It was right. a cool. It was a cool experience. It was a cool experience. Yeah, I'm with you, man. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, these people they leave uh, they leave awake, you know. Yeah. And when they die, uh, as we all will, uh, they they leave a void. Yes. You know, you think about the number of lives they touch. Yeah. Yeah. It's huge. It is huge. Well, and I think that about wraps it up, Dom. What do you think? I mean, it does. Uh, boy, <laughs> boy, I'm looking forward to uh, our next few shows because we've got some real uh, interesting things going on. Yeah. Well, uh, next time on uh, yeah. Monkeys <laughs> Drinking Beans, we're going to tackle a subject that's a little passionate. To uh -huh. say the least. Uh, we're going to have our trailer park episode where we're going to discuss. <laughs> Uh, upcoming movie trailers we're excited about, and some films we've seen, and uh, how movie trailers can ruin the film for you. So stay sure tuned, viewers, <laughs> and uh, we'll see you next time. <laughs>